So, what is actually inside your unopenable Omega Swatch Moonwatch? Well, I'll show you as I destroy one for you to see on this episode of this Tag Heuer Curium Chronograph Restoration. So come on in and let's take a look, shall we? Greetings, my inquisitive friends, and a very warm welcome to you all. So bloody Nora, what was all the mad hysteria about regarding this $260 Omega Moon Swatch Watch, which was then resold by speculators for thousands of dollars? Sorry, I think I got that last video mixed up. That was a fight for toilet paper. But you get my gist. People have sold their houses for tulip bulbs in the past. So what caused this mass hysteria? A $260 watch with the Omega logo on the dial. There is a reason why it was so cheap and I suspect the main reason was down to the disposable movement inside. I'll show you the movement and destroy it so you can see what it's all about. Versions of this disposable movement have actually been around for over a decade in other entry-level chronograph watches such as Tissot, Rotary and this example I have of a Calvin Klein. And now to segue back to our main restoration subject, the amazing serviceable quartz chronograph movement in our Tag Heuer was the predecessor replaced by this cheap non-serviceable range found in the Omega Swatch. So keep watching as I show you how to service it and give you a comparison against the non right to repair version. So I promised to restore this Tag Heuer Curium quartz chronograph for you guys. And the Tag Heuer Curium was my first ever Swiss watch. And this is the watch, the actual watch, which got me started into watchmaking, which I wore for 20 years plus. And Trouble's already got dibs on this one. When it fits him, he's gonna have it. So that's another quartz one. This is an entry level one that was gifted to me when I was at university. I also have another one here, which is an automatic chronometer. Ooh, I've done an automatic chronograph for you guys, so I wanted to do this quartz one. I've even got a little ladies one here from a, this is a paddock edition, which you could only buy in the Formula One racing paddocks. So I've got loads of spares here that I can use, chronograph pushers that I can use, which this one has missing. The reason why I mentioned the Amiga Moon Swatch Watch is because the Swatch Group used to produce this amazing serviceable quartz chronograph movement. And then they went to this non-serviceable piece of whatever you want to call it. And I suspect it's this movement that's in the Moon Swatch Watch because there is no way you can sell a watch for £250 and have an amazing movement like this inside it. And I love this coarse chronograph movement because it's such a nice movement which is serviceable. All the coils are separate so you can change them individually. And then they replace this with this. Which you can see there's hardly a screw in sight because it's non-serviceable. And this is the G10 series, G10711. This one is a G10211. And obviously these have the date versions. The Omega Swatch Watch doesn't have a date function. It's just a simplified version of this movement. So this one, as you can see, the pushes are missing, but the screws are still there as it is stuck. Case and bracelet are not too bad. Let's get this thing opened up. That doesn't look right. There should be a tube in there somewhere. Mm. This one's broken off, I think. Push it out with the other one. There's the broken bit. Yeah, I can 
pull out the little one. Palm cheese, palm cheese. Ooh, you know you wanna see. You know you love the vintage palm cheese. Delicious, delicious. Now, do you wanna see this amazing movement? Let's have a look, shall we? Do, 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 do. Ta -da! Might not look much, but. I really like this movement. There's no hammers, no levers, everything's electronic. Lovely, jubbly. You can see how the gasket is protecting the watch as the arm cheese tries to burrow itself underneath. Cheeky little arm cheese. A little hole there which has the setting lever. Spring, and there we go. There's the stem. Anything in here? can see that the screws are still there so we can reuse those disgustingness so I'll just get this in the wash now and see if we can loosen up that bezel a little bit so we can remove it Okay, so I'll put a new battery in and I'm just going to check all the functions and all the hands work so that we know there isn't an issue with any of the coils. Everything seems okay. I don't really need to service this movement, but I want to show you guys what it looks like. This movement was used by so many brands throughout the 90s and the early 90s, such as Brightling. Cartier, Mont Blanc, many, many others. Can you see the dial fit hook just there? Uh, just give that a little push and the same on the other side. I feel like a real teacher today. Someone's had a little bit of a go on this. Or the cat has. Look at all that. I got into a fight with the cat. So I'll just start off by removing the date disc. So this is the 27 Joule ETA 251 series, which was first launched in 1988. And now for all of you who wanted to see the Omega Swatch movement torn to pieces, this is probably the movement that's in the Moon Omega Moon Swatch watch. As I showed you guys earlier, compared that to this movement, look at all these, there's not a screw in sight. So the only way, so I'll just destroy it just to show you guys what it's all about so as you can see all the coils are sort of plastic riveted on i think they're called rivet plastic rivets there's no screws whatsoever it costs too much money to make screws you know and what would you do after that saddle and once you pry it all open if you can that's it game over I'll put it back on again. Still no screw in sight. I mean, it's not like the use of these movements has brought the cost of watches down. If anything, the price of these watches have gone up. So it just seems like a shady tactic. Either that or they're running out of watchmakers to service these watches. So they've gone for a robotic approach we just remove the movement and stick another one in 
Well, at least some people did get to buy an Amiga for $260. Maybe I'm just being a bit too harsh. Because my only gripe is you should always be allowed to repair stuff. We have the right to repair. So you can see the use of adhesive. There's a couple of more. That's the wrong battery anyways. It's supposed to be a 394. Remove this top plate. You have two screws. One here. And then there's another one here. Come off like that. Now just remove the circuit. got the little connector here for the printed circuit which is basically a little connecting strip inside this little case now what I'll do is remove all these coils how cool is that you can just remove the coil and replace it Then we've got three green ones. It's the sixty second chronograph wheel. Let's remove this cover very carefully because there's loads underneath here. Ooh. So imagine getting that back on and lining up all those pivots. Ooh, ooh. That's going to be fun. Data and the rotor. Another one here. So, so far you can see that's just from the one layer and we have another layer to go. So now we just remove the next layer, which I held in with these three screws. All the chronograph pushers and the keyless works and another circuit. You can remove these chronograph pushes as well. You can see there's some grease on them. It's 
So there you go. So all the parts. Pretty awesome. So we'll get most of this in the wash except for the two circuits, the connector here and the coils. Also we'll keep the magnetic step rotors separate. So I've kept the minute counting and hour counting gears here. And if you don't want to get yourself in a pickle, so you can put these in one little compartment and you can put everything else in another compartment. Saves you from scratching your head later on. So I'll put those four in there. Now I can put the rest of them, say in this one. These are the little magnetic step rotors. Don't want to magnetize everything or attracting any tiny metallic particles. So we'll wash these separately, but we can put the stators in, in a different compartment. So put them in there. And we have five of these. So we'll remove the little, that's basically your little motor or step rotor as it's known. And there's all five of them stuck together. Now we'll just get all the screws in. So that's all that's left. Screws. One hour later. Here's our little step rotors. They all kind of fancy each other a little bit, so I'm keeping them apart. Otherwise, this is what happens. <coughs> so I've just put them in a bit of cleaning solution to soften up any oils that might be on the pivots. And then I'll just manually clean them with some radical. I'll just use my titanium and brass tweezers. Just can't keep them apart, they're like little bugs. So after the wash, just about with the bezel and also one of those little stabilizing pins is missing so i'll show you how to cook something up for that and these are some of my old butter straps so I'll use something like that maybe and I can use that to pull the bezel off. Did I get that? Ugh. Now you know why it was jammed on that. Arm cheese, lovely, lovely. Let's just remove that ratchet spring. And then the retaining spring in there. 
and that seems fine and we can also remove the glass gasket do I look good in that? come on tell me the truth yeah so since I've got my box of things up sort out our little issue here the missing pin there i'll just measure that one out instead of having to turn something on the lathe we'll use our loaf and find something in there so this little pin here is about a millimeter friction fitted in found these pins with the nail end just there so that will allow me to hammer it in and and create a nice friction fit as you guys have asked many times whether i put my signature on the watches i don't so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this gold one so in the future maybe 50 years down the line if somebody is in ownership of this watch and they find a gold pin then you know where it's been maybe we should do a prize for whoever finds this now we'll have curium owners all over the world taking off their chronograph pushers to find this so that's my length. I'll just transfer that length onto this end and cut it off at this end. What a mess. But not anymore. There it is. Sitting slightly higher than the other one, but we'll file it down a little bit and then we'll see how strong that is. When we do the polishing, I'll try and abuse it a little bit. So let's have a look at some of these parts. These are all cases for the Anna DG version of the Curium. I can't just swap the case over and I wouldn't do that anyway, keep it all original. But I can use some of these buttons, these pushers. Got another one there, got another couple there. So I don't need to order any pushers in, I just use some from these cases that I have here. And that is the Anna DG version of the Curium. That's just the generic version of this movement. So you can see the clasp is a little bit damaged. I think it wouldn't close properly. So somebody just tried to squeeze it from the sides. They mangled it up a bit. Also, I was going to mirror the center and mirror the bezel and have it brushed on the outside as some models did have that liquid metal design. But the bracelet code on this suggests that it was fully brushed from the factory. So I'm going to apply the fully brushed finish. flush now if your clasp does become loose over time the idea is just to try and squeeze the squeeze the wings without squeezing the whole thing So I've just cleaned it up and polished it up by removing all the big scratches and things. Same with this side. And our little pin is still withstanding. I've gone over it with the mop. Mm. 
The little pins in there, pretty steady. Still got a big scratch still there. Looks like a tool mark. I'm going to do the same with the bracelet. Remove all the scratches instead of just brushing it over this. Just get rid of all the scratches first and then we brush it with a nicer brush than this. The links are quite curved this way as well and this way. So I don't want to use anything to flatten it out. So I'm going to use this one up here, which is still quite, you can see it's quite flexible. So it will hug the, hug the bracelet rather than flattening it out. So you just need to be patient and take your time. After a few minutes, you should be able to identify what is the brushed finish and what are scratches. So you can see scratches, scratches. You don't need to remove all the brush, just you need to remove the odd scratches that are going in completely different directions to the grain. The scratches are gone and the rest is just a little bit of the straight grain that's left over. But straight away you can notice when there's a scratch that doesn't belong and you can work on it. So you can see that one. So we'll remove that. See this one's a bit more severe. These center links are pretty flat, so I could take this on a on a stiffer map. That's what I'll do. Now some of you ask me if I'm actually naked while I'm working. Well I wouldn't advise anyone to work naked around rotary tools. No, I mean. can see that big mark there is right near the logo so I just want to that touching that logo and flattening it out I want to get rid of that big mark there I'm just going to use the edge of the wheel so this little bugger here has defeated me because I don't think I can get it out without causing a big imbalance in the material here so again this is one of those situations where you just have to know when to stop Wow, you little bugger. This is what we have so far. Pretty unimpressive. It looks pretty nice like this, doesn't it? Now, I used to be a boy racer back in the day with my Ford Capris and my XR3Is. And I always used to buy the car magazines like Max Power which don't exist anymore, I don't think. And in those mags, they would always have these tags advertised in there. And I used to lust over them. And they would always describe these as this liquid metal design. Cyberdyne Systems, Polyoly Liquid Metal. Get to the chopper! I think they got it from Terminator 2, which came out around the same time. And the Seiko that I restored a few months back, the Arctura and this Kirium was designed by the same dude bloke, the legendary Jörg Heisek who designed watches for Breguet, Vacheron, Constantin. Get down, get down. We need to get out of here. Managed to keep that nice and flat. Now we 
we're going to turn this beautiful liquid metal and scratch the living hell out of it. <laughs> That's got a bit of a wobble on it. <laughs> Left some of the black from the numbers and the little dots in the hot ultrasonic wash. So I'll get those filled up. So that's another cool thing about this movement, there aren't loads of different sizes of screws, there are only a few different sizes which you can easily identify as I've just done now. Let's start off with the yoke. So the oils that we need for this are some D5 or HP1300, we need some 9501 and we need some 8201. And there's the intermediate setting wheel, wheel, the jumper wheel. Now the oiling on this is very extensive. I probably won't get to show you all of it. A little bit on this wheel here. Setting lever jumper will sit there. We'll put that setting lever jumper on. This bunga screw in there. So now I'm going to be using these three posts. So I'll get some D5 or HP1300 on those. This is the date indicator driving wheel. And we'll put a little bit of lubrication just here because the date driving wheel will be in contact with this jumper here as it goes round. Let's see if I can get a good shot. Yeah, that'll do. So that grease will do its thing. And we'll leave it there for now. So that's the hour wheel. And goes the hour wheel. Minute wheel. The intermediate date wheel. They have the cannon pinion with the driver. See the grease on there. Just work it underneath like so. Now we get the electronic module in. So now we'll just get the contact springs for the chronograph pushes. A little bit of 8201. And the top one needs a little bit of oil here. And the reason why I oiled 
that section here is because you can see this top one is near the keyless so we will be having some contact against this little stud here and now we can get the sliding pinion in now this stem instead of putting grease on it put grease just need a bit of d5 on there because it's not doing anything too heavy like winding hence why there's only a sliding pinion rather than a winding pinion as well now we have the stop lever and switch this battery bridle so this is the upper plate which is the jewel plate and this is the 27 jewel movement so that's a lot of jewels for a quartz watch before we start screwing anything down just check our keyless I love the sound of wind. It makes me want to just fall asleep. And it's raining outside. <laughs> what an idiot. now four of these stators are the same and one of them is slightly different can you see the difference see this one has a little notch so now we need to install these four and we'll stick one here one here one here we need one over here and the one with the little notch goes here so all these ones are called the stator and guess what this one is called it's called wait for it the additional stator i mean what a name now we can get those two red coils in now let's get the three green ones in Now we'll get five screws in to secure part of the coil. As the kids would say, that coil looks sick. We have the little connector in its housing. It does come out. There's no need to take it out. This goes in there. Now I won't be able to oil any of these jewels from the top side because it's closed. So what I'll do is I'll oil them from this side before I put any of the wheels or step rotors in. And for that, I've got my very special oiler there. You know? Now that's thin. Thinner than a strand of hair. And I've got a creaky chair. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Baby's good to me, you know she's happy as can be, you know she said so. And we love them and I'll be fine. And first, we'll get this third wheel in. So now we have this additional intermediate wheel. Now we can get the second wheel in. And then the intermediate wheel. That's the driving wheel for the chronograph wheel, 60 seconds. 
60 minute counter driving wheel counting wheel so you do have to line up quite a few pivots so i'll be doing this in private so i'll see you on the other side yep they're all in so we can see all the pivots through the jewels can you see them now i'm going to just do a bit of oiling now we'll work on this side here and we'll get the step rotor in put that driving wheel on first So now we'll work work on the other side and we'll get the step rotor in first. The hour counter driving wheel just there and then the hour counting wheel. And now we can get the bridge in. Give it a little test. This movement looks complex, but it is a joy to work on, to be honest. daughter made me a cup of coffee but look at the cup she used now we can put the chronograph wheel on 60 seconds And we can do a bit more oiling. Printed circuit on now. So we use the screws with the biggest heads. Okay. Hello, mate. Where are we gonna go? Are you ready? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. So where are we going? A bit. We'll set off in ten minutes. Ten minutes. Mm, are you ready? Are you gonna get in a little pack lunch? Taking trouble to his first football match today. He's so excited. He's been going on about it all week. This one holds a little connector union. And that's the quick set. The more a little clean and a little grease.
Before I put the dial on, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the tips of the, in the posts so that the next time it's serviced, you won't get quoted for a brand new set of hands. That's what some companies do. Before they touch it, they'll add a set of hands to the quote because they know when the hands come off, usually the little sleeves stay stuck to the posts. So I'm nearly done here, friends. I end up with so much extra footage which I never seem to be able to cram into each video without making them too boring for the casual viewer. So I'll have some extra footage uploaded onto my Patreon page for anyone who wants to see it. There was some extra stuff about the chronograph pusher screws and why I think the pushers fell off, which I couldn't fit into the video, which may be of interest to some of you tinkerers. The 90s, Terminator 2 and the Tag Heuer Curium kinda showed us the way to the future. And now that I'm in that future, Working on this Curium makes me long for the past when things were so much simpler. The Curium has a very special place in my heart, so it was a pleasure doing this one for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did and thank you for chilling out with me. What words of comfort can I leave you with amidst all the hardship and turmoil that has inflicted many of us this year? I hope I can provide a little bit of solace with some tinkering videos. Times are hard for so many and our governments and their shadowy friends won't help to resolve the issues we are facing that they created. So let's help each other. A bit of kindness can go a long way. Even making someone smile is an act of charity. So please take care of one another and put a smile on someone's face. Peace, love and blessings to you all. Hasta la vista babies and if the almighty wills, I'll be back.